the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I am Carrie Sharp, joined by a desk full of people, and we are talking transit today. I know it is a topic that interests so many of you as you sit in traffic in Nashville, as you decide where to live so you can get to your work, get to your job affordably and in a reasonable amount of time. So we're going to talk about it over the next hour. Go ahead, get on the phone lines. I know you have questions. The number is right there on the screen, 615-737+. Plus, Let me introduce you to our panel to uh, talk with you tonight. Up uh, first, we have Jessica Dolphin from the Transit Alliance, followed by Aaron Half. I'm going to try this. Hafken Sheen. Hafken Sheen. Thank you, Hafken Sheen. I thought I was going to get it with, uh, the, um, let's see, the Director of Mobility at Vanderbilt University, and also Clifton Harris with the uh, Urban League of Middle Tennessee. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, you for having are us. You are also together on a coalition committee tell me about that and I want to know from each of your individual organizations um, what how you're involved in transit where you stand on what we're doing now go ahead okay um, Jessica Dolphin with Transit Alliance of Middle Tennessee it's a 501c3 nonprofit on a mission to build support for regional multimodal transit with dedicated funding okay Aaron so Vanderbilt University is obviously one of the largest private employers in Middle Tennessee and so um, I've been at Vanderbilt for just over a year and I'm the executive director of mobility and leading our Move U plan which is our transportation and mobility strategic plan to actually reduce our drive alone rate from 76.5% mm -hmm. to 55% by 2025. Interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, Clifton? And the Urban League has been about workforce development for uh, over 110 years, and um, we're about making sure that people have access you know, to good paying jobs, and transportation is the key you know, in order to get people to and from jobs uh, in a timely fashion, if we will. So quality transportation is critical. Mm -hmm. Just about a year and a half ago, the city voted down, as you all well know, the Let's Move Nashville transit referendum, and, and really by a two to one you know, uh, vote, it, it, was a, it was a resounding no. This is not what the city wanted. What has been happening behind the scenes? You all are involved in it to say, let's regroup, let's come up with another plan, because something has to be done. I think everybody agrees on the situation is only going to get worse, right? It will. Oh, it will. Um, it has. Yes, it has. <laughs> You're right. You're I mean, right. Spoiler alert, we all know what happens when we do nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so We're there. Yeah, we are there. there. We're going to continue to, to crawl there. Uh, so we, as you mentioned, we are part of a group together, a coalition called Connect Mid-10. And it's essentially a continuation of the, co the Transit for Nashville Coalition that was formed during the campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After the campaign, there was a debrief, and they said, some folks said, if you want to keep this conversation going, let's keep meeting. And so some of us did, a very <laughs> tight group. Uh, so we kept meeting, we kept going through iteration, iteration of, you know, why are we together at this mm -hmm. table? What do we want? Ultimately, the mission is a diverse group of businesses and organizations um, that want to see near-term transit solutions uh, with an eye toward long-term dedicated funding. Do you feel like what went wrong with Let's Move Nashville where there were too many big ticket items or maybe just one big ticket item that really people couldn't put their arms around and say, yes, let's all get behind light rail or whatever it may be. Is that what went wrong? I think there, uh, there are as many answers to that question <laughs> as there are people in Nashville in the nation and I think possibly that's the world. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Honestly. Because everybody had a different perspective, right, going yes. into it about what they needed in their community for their life. But I think one thing that we what, that we heard a lot and we hear from a lot of our peer cities is that all of our cities and, and our peer cities go through these planning exercises where we think about how we're going to grow, we think about how we're going to invest in transit and transportation, and it's often hard to get people to come to those engagements and to those mm -hmm. meetings because people are busy. They're out, you know, 
doing living their lives and so oftentimes it doesn't raise really to the level of most people's attention until it is on the ballot yeah. and I think that that you know a lot of cities have seen that their first go at the polls wasn't successful for that very reason and now the, you know the next time the conversation goes as Jessica said we now know what happens if we do nothing yeah um, and more people know about the issues and know how important high quality transportation is to our quality of life and as Jessica said our coalition is really Really, there are people in the coalition who voted no against the referendum and so the fact that we've been able to sort of come together and say okay we need to be on the same page we need to be a group that the city leaders need to come to and ask for our thoughts and and be engaged in the entire process I think is is sort of part of the next step forward one thing that's been frustrating for me to watch since the referendum was voted down it's been about a year and a half and we haven't had anybody you mentioned city leaders really stand up and say we are regrouping and boldly say this is what we're going to do next mm -hmm. we've had mayor briley on when he was the mayor several times and and the the question would come up from many of you at home what about transportation and it was like you know we're doing some things behind the scenes some smaller things re um, uh, synchronizing uh, traffic lights and busy corridors and we're going to worry about it after the election. Will the election happen? Riley's out, Cooper's in, and we still haven't heard much. We reached out to the Cooper administration for the show, by the way, and they said, listen, we're just getting our act together. We're, we're not there yet to talk about this. And but I yet, think that's, Nashville and I think moves that's a, on. I think that's a fair statement on, or position on their part, you know, because um, it was very clear you know, that if the referendum did not pass, mm -hmm. it would take another five to six years to get re-engaged and get things you now back into the cycle. And so we're going through that cycle now, and I think one of the things that we really learned from a lot of the issues that, mm -hmm. that, that came up was the fact you now that our messaging needed to be a lot more defined, a lot more clear to answer everyone's questions, because I think a lot of people had questions that did not get answered. What, what, what do you think did not get answered? Um, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, how is it going to impact my neighborhood? Um, how is it going to impact you now my route you now to mm -hmm. to work or to the doctor's office? Is it, uh, is it going to help me you know get my kids to and from school? Um, so I think there are a lot of questions that had to be answered um, that could have been answered a lot better. Let's just put it that way. And so now the coalition has a, ta a chance to get all of that messaging mm -hmm. correct. And I think people really need to understand the value of transit in a city. You know, there are there are a lot of people in Nashville that have never had the opportunity to ride the bus yeah. before, and um, and and so don't understand how valuable high quality transit can be in our lives. And I think that that's why the messaging can be really difficult mm -hmm. because um, you you have to try and make that point about why people should should invest in this. Um, but I think the lessons are really clear from the cities that were you know that we're, we want to emulate that we mm -hmm. want to be like investing in transit is critical for us to be able to manage our growth um, and maintain our quality of life because if I give up my give up my car yes what does that mean uh -huh. mm -hmm. how do I get around that's a big change and is for it, a lot and of am, people. am I going to be able to get to where I need to get to mm -hmm. with ease and in a timely fashion yeah let's jump to the lines real quick because that's what the show is all about it is open line Mike thanks for being our first caller tonight what's your question or comment thought on this issue uh, yes uh, my name is Mike and uh, I would like to start out by making a statement and then I would like to ask a question okay go ahead okay uh, the statement I'd like to make is uh, we continually talk about spending more and more and more money on uh, uh, on transit in Nashville, but all you have to do is go to any main bus line in Nashville and watch the big double long buses go by with just one or two people on the bus. And it's, it's unbelievable that we can't send the buses to the areas of town where people want to ride the bus. I mean, it's just, it's, it's outrageous. And here we're talking about more and more money for buses and people are virtually non-existent on many buses all day long you got these drivers driving all over nashville uh and i know they are making a living but the thing about it is they're not hauling anybody 
Oh, they're hauling very few people. I mean, what is so hard about finding out where the traffic could potentially be in Nashville for a bus transit system? And But yet, every time you turn around, the, the citizens of Nashville are ta- asked to come with a rail system. We're asked to come with... Uh, tunnel systems and all this other stuff that cost literally billions of dollars. And people don't want to ride those mass transit buses. Just just look at the one railroad that we have from Nashville out to uh, Hendersonville and on out to Lebanon. I mean, uh, we do have some trafficking there because there are people who want to come to Nashville and want to get back home without fighting the traffic. But it is not an activity that is breaking the city. Uh, the idea that we just got to spend more and more and more. Uh, it's like the gentleman said a minute ago on your left, what's in it for me? Uh, come on, let's, let's plan a transportation system that really hauls people that need to be hauled from point A to point B. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank and you, Mike. if you can react to this, yeah. I would appreciate it. We're going to. Thank you, Mike, for starting us off tonight. We're getting those calls lined up. They're coming in. You know, I think Mike has a very valid point. I've seen it. You all have seen it. Your bus goes by and there's two people on it. And yet we talk about investing in more buses and busing centers and transit centers. I love I love this question. Can I take it first? Go for it. <laughs> because that, that's what I what what I started with talking about um, the va- the value of transit. Mm-hmm. We need we need to have a deeper understanding of the value of transit. A transit system is only as valuable as the investments that you put into it. Yes. And and two of the key points of a, a high quality transit system is that the bus is coming at least every ten to fifteen minutes. So if you miss the bus, you're not waiting for thirty minutes or an hour, um, and that it runs all day long. It starts at 4 or 5 in the morning, and it goes until midnight or 1 in the morning. Um, so that no matter what, when your when your work starts mm-hmm. or when you get off of work, you know that you'll be able to um, take the bus home. Very, very, none of our buses run after 11 p.m., and there's only... Um, six or seven routes that have 15 minute frequency. That is not a high quality train right. system. And the vast majority of our of our transit routes are running on roads with no sidewalks. Who wants to stand in a stormwater ditch mm-hmm. and wait for the bus? Who's gonna choose that option over driving? But the problem is is that the, the way we're growing as fast as we're growing, our only options oftentimes are to get in a car and that's just a recipe for more congestion. Mm-hmm. Clifton, did you have something? Well, to I would only add, you know, to that that um, there also has to be an an audit of where people come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think WeGo is going to have to look at that and see, you know, where the ridership has really come fr- comes from, where the employment centers are, mm-hmm. um, and I think there's going to have to be a strong educational campaign to make people uh, know and feel that buses are safe mm-hmm. uh, and clean. Uh, um, and um, and I think you know we have to look at you know connectors you know so that we don't have to come into downtown and then go back go back out. So mm-hmm. um, in my mind, you know, one of the things that we will be looking at and calling for is a transit audit. You know that makes simple-minded common sense as we look to how we want to spend resources on this issue of of transit and transportation. And WeGo has actually started that process with their with their Better Bus program, and um, the the technical term for it is a comprehensive operations operations analysis. And more and more bus systems across the country are starting to do that with regularity. It was something we didn't do for a long time, and now we know we need to do it at least every four or five years because because people move and people change, and right. and we need to understand where they're where they need to go and where they're coming from. Um, I, I know that WeGo's Better Bus process has been delayed a little bit with the change in leadership that's happened at the mayor's office over the last two years, but I know they're raring to go to to bring some new solutions out to the residents. Jessica, I know you want to chime in. I do. Thanks. Uh, I would I would add to both of them that we go. We'd love to add more service, more frequency, longer hours. The funding just isn't there, mm-hmm. and that's in why fact, they've had to cut back and raise fares. That's yes. right. They were um, effectually cut about eight million dollars this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. This funding, um, this budget funding cycle, and. That's because there's no dedicated funding for transit. 
it is reliant upon general funds mm -hmm. and vying for the same pot of money as public education, public health, public safety, public works. So um, until we decide to, co to invest as a community, mm -hmm. we will probably be facing more of that. Okay. And we, that investment we, includes increasing ridership. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have to make the decision make yeah. the to change decision. our habits. Right. And that is very, I mean, study after study has proven it is so hard to get someone who owns a car and is used to driving to work to make the change to right. ride a bus or to ride you know, a subway, something like that. It is so very hard to get over that hump. Behavioral change is difficult, but people can do it and they do it. Right. I don't think that Nashville is full of special people. <laughs> right? I mean, we're special, what? but we're, I feel special. <laughs> we're, but we're no different. We, people take transit all over the world. We're, we're, right. we're not different in that sense. Yes. If it's convenient, mm -hmm. at least as convenient uh, as my car, mm -hmm. and I can do it, it's, it's frequent, mm -hmm. and I can get home when I need and get yeah. back, I'm going to take that right. because I want to be productive with my time. Right. I don't want to get home and finish up work. How glorious would it be to be able to finish up my work on the way home? Yeah, exactly. Right. I think if it fits into people's schedules mm -hmm. and it improves uh, their pocketbook, yeah. mm -hmm. then then Absolutely. we're talking, yes, right? That's right? Then it's, it comes back to how does this help me? Right. Because right. even when this this uh, the Let's Move Nashville, we were talking about light rail. I've got Music City Star coming from Wilson County, but guess what? Not on my schedule. I'm right. a second shift worker. Right. Mm -hmm. Can't and do it. One thing, since our since Mike mentioned the um, WeGo Star, I, I I do I have to point out that when when we put the WeGo Star in place, it was actually one of the most cost effective regional train corridors. Actually, I think it was the most wow. um, effective in in the entire country. I think we bought um, those train cars from Chicago for a dollar each, <laughs> and um, and because of the new positive train control legislation that's happened mm -hmm. at the federal government. We've actually had to limit. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a, excuse me. It's an expensive investment to make, and we don't have funding for it. Back to Jessica's yeah. point. Um, so until we make that investment in positive train control, we've had to go back to eleven route, eleven trips a week, mm -hmm. and so we've actually had to cut one of our um, one of our trips. So we we aren't going to be able to expand service. We aren't going to be able to add new rail cars. We aren't going to be able to add passing trains um, so that trains can pass each other in either direction until we're able to make that investment. And just to um, really pound Jessica's point home, we, we are actually the last major city in the country without dedicated funding for transit. We're the last. When, really? we, were, when we were doing the transit ref from two years ago, mm -hmm. I think there were two or three others. And we're, they na have we're now the last. <laughs> That's not a spot that we need to be in. No. If we want to make progress on all fronts. All right, we do have to take a quick commercial break. <laughs> I love this conversation already. And Joe and Olivia, I know you're on the line. Hold where you are. We'll get to you right after this.